not my name. Whenever I go out, the people always shout, Hey, look, it's that guy who's not... Hello and welcome to the stream. Today's padding audio was a retelling of the John Jacob Jinkelheimer Smith or Smythe song that is very common in, in America, uh, or was at one point. Uh, anyway, today we actually will be... Um, by the way, I did not stream yesterday, and you're welcome. Uh, today we will be looking at uh, the, the question we, we were looking to see if we could find um, inverse functions. Uh, so, you know, if we knew, r I mean, the sort of common function we have right now is if you know the right ascension, declination, latitude, and longitude, and a couple of other things, you can tell where a star will be in the sky at a given location. Um, so we were asking the question, well, what if you um, know the location and you want to find something else from it? In other words, what, what other relations do we get from that equation? And we did get some, but um, using spherical coordinates, we had some uh, difficulties. The, the equations were pretty complicated um, and, you know, not, not really obvious or easy to use, which may be just the way it is. So the question we might ask is, hey, instead of using spherical coordinates, why don't we use rectangular coordinates? And the answer to why don't we use rectangular coordinates is that they also have problems that we will talk about as we, but we're going to do it anyway because uh, presumably the, I actually don't know, I've sort of done this before uh, at a more limited scale, but I don't think I've ever gone full uh, rectangular. And uh, so let's find out what happens. I'm, I'm excited. Can't tell from my voice, but it's because I'm trying to, trying to get back into the stream mode, man. All right, so let's go back over here to um, the Wolfram Cloud where we had all this cool stuff. And again, these were the sort of magic equations of doing um, that tell you the azimuth and the altitude given a bunch of other information. And we, we went quite far in this. We actually got some other crap going on here, but now it's gone. And I sh really should do one of those. Um, well, first of all, Mr. Wolfman has to go away. Um, Restart session, hang on, cancel, cancel, don't do that yet. I uh, actually will want to rewrite the equations for azimuth and altitude, and we'll see why in just a second. Uh, but we do want to keep our, our library loads in place. So let's restart session. Yep, I don't think I understand what that actually is supposed to do. Um, anyway. So maybe I can just delete all the freaking... Oh, is there an option to delete all output? Yes, there is. Okay, we'll go with that one. Okay, so now what we're going to do is we are going to not write these as relations, and there, there's going to be a reason for that. We're going to write these as true equal as you know assignments, equality assignments. Um, I think that is correct, and I think the altitude becomes just this. And one way to check this, I okay, it doesn't seem like it's balanced, but let's hit Control. Yep. Oh, okay, that actually worked. And then just to make sure it worked, we go back into this cell, Mr. Smartass Wolfram Alpha person, and make sure we have our definition correct. Okay, so this is, th this is how we do it using spherical coordinates. So how are we going to get to rectangular coordinates? Well, first of all, we need, well, not first of all, we do need names for our rectangular coordinates. Um, so if we take our spherical coordinates for the altitude and azimuth, which is one of the many things we're looking at, uh, we can say spherical to x, y, z for um, azimuth, altitude. And now um, the radius of the sphere uh, is going to be 1 because we're talking about sort of a virtual celestial sphere. And we're not talking about the Earth necessarily. We're not talking about any specific sphere. All of our spheres will have radius 1. And it turns out that's going to be important in a good way and in a bad way, unless I, at least when I did the last time it was. So what do we have here? What do we have, uh, what do these coordinates become? Um, oh, wow. Yeah, that was probably not a great idea. Okay, this would be the first Pomodoro time, but as always, we skip the first one. Uh, but I will get up and walk around in the next time. Okay, so this was actually a terrible idea on my part. Um, I didn't mean to assign them this early on. I meant to, um, I meant to, yeah. 
didn't mean to do this. So, let us, ah, man. All right, let's leave it this way for right now. Instead of working on azimuth and altitude, there are basically three different spheres we're looking at here. One is the sphere as viewed by somebody on Earth. That's the azimuth altitude sphere. One is the sphere as viewed from the celestial sphere, which is like the, you know, right, uh, the right ascension and declination sphere. Arguably, it, it's equivalent to the sphere of someone looking from the North Pole uh, with the correct orientation. I mean, at the North Pole, every direction is south. But if you arbitrarily choose a direction to be south specifically, you can get the same thing we would have here. Um, so those are our three spheres. Let's go ahead and convert one of the other ones. Let's convert the RA and declination sphere. And hopefully this will be much nicer. That's what I'm looking for. Okay, so this is the uh, conversion of the RA and declination sphere. Now there's two interesting things going on here. One is we now have three variables, x, y, and z, and we're, we're obviously not going to be starting off with spherical coordinates. So we're just going to call these um, rd, nope, we're not, rdx, rdy, and rdz. Um, okay, so that those are just the names we're going to give them. Now there's something to notice here that um, if you want just, b these combine the azimuth or the right ascension and the declination into one vector, into three numbers. Um, so at some point, if we want to, let's say, uh, extract the right ascension, the, the question might be, do we need all three of these numbers to extract the right ascension? And the answer is no, because the right ascension, uh, in fact, let's just do this. Let's just convert this back into spherical coordinates. And we'll see the right ascension, um, does not depend the right ascension, which will be the first coordinate of this return value, if I can do it. Okay. See, the return, um, the right ascension, this is, this is the right ascension, this is the declination, and this is the, uh, the radius, which will be one in our case. But we haven't specified it, so it could be anything for these three arbitrary variables. So here you'll see the right ascension does not depend on z. The arc, the, the declination looks like it depends on x, y, and z, but it turns out it doesn't. And the reason here is because we have a radius, uh, because we have a sphere of radius one, rdx squared plus rdy squared is simply one minus rdz squared. So we can, we can actually get that value. Um, and it's sort of obvious if looking at the sphere that the latitude is only related to the z distance above the equator. It is not related to uh, the x and y coordinates of where you are. So this is an important point because um, there will be times we, we want to extract just the declination or the right ascension, or if you're a mathematician, the phi value, or the theta value, sorry, and the phi value, or, or the phi value without necessarily extracting them both at the same time. And that will become an issue. In fact, it's gonna become so much of an issue, um, we're gonna look at this in two different ways. For right now, we're going to look at z as being the square root of one minus rdx squared minus rdy squared. Now it's clearly equal to that because the length of this vector is one. The question might arise, why do we care that it's, that it's this? Why do we write it like this? And the answer is, in attempting to establish the linear formulas, um, this, is going to be, uh, this is going to come out a little bit better, hopefully, in the math than if we just left this as a r random RDZ. And this also automatically incorporates our condition that the vector is of length one. Okay. So, so now, okay, so now, <laughs> oy vey. Okay. The other thing we need to convert, the other input to this function uh, is the longitude and latitude. And we're gonna call those this is probably a really bad idea, naming convention. I was, I was, I almost gave it up yesterday because LL looks really funky. And once again, we're going to follow the exact same pattern, LL for latitude, longitude, and we're now going to create another vector of length one, which represents the latitude and longitude. So how do we get these suckers into these suckers, into these suckers? Well, I forgot. No, I didn't. Um, so now when we're going to say, so we're going to convert these um, rectangular coordinates back to spherical, and we know that the, uh, whoa, 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 okay, 
my bad, hang on. Going too fast here. Let's call this one, this is going to be important enough we want to give it a name. It's not a very good name, temp1205, but you know, hey. Midnight, and I'm waiting on the 1205. I don't think that's the right lyric, but anyway. Okay. So, how does this help? Well, it means every place we have declination, we can replace it with this. Every place we have right ascension, we can replace it with this. And this is just one. Okay, let me, let me, I don't want to fall down the rabbit hole of doing oversimplification, but this is actually, I think this will simplify it a little bit better. And it will not. Um, these are all real numbers, and that might simplify it a bit. I don't know if I want to add that. Yeah, I, I do, because we actually want as much simpli simplification as possible. So let's add into our conditions here. Um, element reals rdx rdy uh llx lly now i'm going to put something here that d appears to not make sense um and i think i need a list here we're not using rdz or llz so you're kind of wondering why i'm putting it in here it's because we will use it later we will be using both forms of this um of this uh of these uh, coordinates the rectangular coordinates will both do it with and without an, a z coordinate and hopefully if i do it all right it'll be the easiest so it'll be one of the easier solutions okay um that is not what i meant to say i meant to say that these are all elements of the reals not that the reals are elements of them that would be weird they'd be sets with the real numbers okay no point is to see if we can make the simplification work better. Uh, you know, I forgot that shift enters. I, okay. Okay. Let's see what this is. Yeah. Kind of worries me. Because um, we are starting out pretty simple here. Um, and the only... Okay, so the only question here, okay, so the other thing we need to know about these uh, is the fundamental condition, oh boy, uh, because it's possible that theoretically these things, uh, rdy could be, plus rdx squared could be big enough that it, it, uh, it, this makes this a negative number. So, this is where it gets ugly. So the conditions we have are the very simple conditions that they're all real numbers. That's a very beautiful, nice condition. The other condition we're going to have here, and boy, I'm going to regret this. I'm going to make the condition that we, we we're sort of doing implicitly anyway, that um, the, the, the um, norm of this vector is 1. I don't know if that's going to help Mathematica simplify it. So this is a pretty complicated condition to give Mathematica usually try to give it as simple conditions as possible because it's stupid okay alrighty let's see if this helps any it probably won't yeah unfortunately <sighs> actually uh, man if they're real and the sum of their squares is with another number is one they have to be less than one um, However, I, I think we will bizarrely get simplifications after we stick these things into the formula. I know that doesn't really make a lot of sense, but I mean, that doesn't seem like it's going to happen, but it, it does for some reason. Either that or uh, this is going to work totally different than it does on my Mathematica last night, in which case I'll be just as stuck as you guys are or, you know, whatever. Okay, so here we go. So how do we put these, get these numbers into this formula for altitude? Well, we know the declin- oh, shit. Uh, sorry, we still need this. So we know now, for, you know, if we use rectangular coordinates, we know that I have no idea what the hell I'm doing with my life. It's very sad. Uh, let's see. Simplify this, given conditions. Where do I lose my, um... Because I clearly get th this. Oh, hang on. That is this. So what the hell is wrong? 
Okay, hang on. I think maybe I created some output that I didn't want. Actually, I can use my wonderful delete all output, which is actually a useful function. Thank you, Mathematica people. Okay, for some reason it thinks I've input another bracket somewhere. Um, I have not. Lying piece of shit. Um, I don't really need this right now, so we can comment it out. Um, it does worry me though a little bit. Why do you think N25 is that? Have you lost your freaking mind? I mean, I've lost my freaking mind a long time ago. Alright, one more time. The delete all output is just totally awesome. Okay, here we go. And for some reason, in thinks in 25 is... Um, this is trapped within the... XYZ to sphere, right? Square root... Data end conditions... Alright, we'll ignore it for now because we don't really need it. So how do we how do we how do we put in the right ascension and declination into this? Well, um, by the way, at some point we probably need to add in the conditions that apply to right ascension and declination. Also, although many of them are sort of subsumed into this equation because this equation was simplified using those assumptions, um, but we'll see what happens. Okay. So basically, we know this is the declination if we're using uh, rectangular coordinates. This is the right ascension, and this despite the fact that Mathematica refuses to do it, is the number one. Uh, but so that's not very interesting. So now we're going to say, give me the azimuth with the declination, and I'm going to be 12052 because I don't really want to type that all out, and the right ascension going to temp 12051. Um, so show me what that is. Shiny-ish. Um, we need to do a little bit more here. Uh, let's go ahead and get rid of this over here. Yes, that is kind of awesome. Um, it's not really that awesome. Now the other thing is right now we're using um, we're using azimuth as a degree measure. Also, Latin lawn we need to do this too. So let's. Let's really ramp this sucker up. Um, it's going to look exactly the same with a different... Um, 1 minus LL x squared. With basically L RD replaced with LL. That, that's what we're going to see here. Um, and it's, there's n th th it's not going to simplify any better than... than um, than Deccan R8 did, obviously. It's ex literally the same thing. So this is temp... Okay, okay, hang on. The longitude goes to the... F oh, fuck. Okay. Yeah. Lati longitude is the first one. It's always the theta value. I kind of wish I had uh, written these in the right order for the first one. Latitude, I mean, the, they're correct, but it says 2, 1, sort of 1, 2 is going to be the second uh, the second uh, value there. And now, we're still not quite there yet, but now we have something even uglier. Okay. Um, so now, this is not going as well as I'd hoped. Um, so the other thing we sort of want here, actually, is we're still using degrees. We want we want spherical coordinates for the azimuth and altitude. So the first thing we have to do is make these same conversions for altitude. And let's see, is there GMST is going to be a bugaboo for us for a long time, but everything else is now in our uh, rectangular coordinates. GMST is effectively an angle, and it's effectively going to be a pain in the ass. Okay, so now no, I don't want twice. So now give me the altitude with these things um, spun up like this, okay? Again, very nasty. Um, I guess I could try simplifying them. Um, in fact, I will. The The problem, we'll go ahead and call this AZ2. I don't think it's going to simplify. Uh, although it might, because it just, 
it's weird how Mathematica decides when to simplify. Sometimes it'll do it for a more complex expression. It'll simplify the same thing. It won't simplify for a less comp complicated. There's somewhere, uh, possibly on Mathematica.StackExchange, sort of a list of things that Mathematica does so weird that it's like, what the hell? Okay. Um, some basic problems it can't solve that humans can solve. And it's not, it's not really... Why is the do these look so familiar? These these look the same, don't they? Hmm. These might look too similar to each other. Well, actually, they're not. No, they're not. They're they're, they're different. They just both have arctan in them. So now, my fucking god. Okay. So now, what's the big excitement going to be that we've got these both these um, uh, al easy to an alt two? <coughs> Well, those are still spherical coordinates, so we want to go back into, yes, x, y, z coordinates. That's the exciting part. Azimuth 2, alt 2, and then the radius is just 1. And then we're going to an expression that's so terrible, no one's going to be able to look at it. That is pretty fucking bad. Okay? But now we're going to actually simplify it down a little bit. I don't think this will simplify, and I think we might be going down a dead end here. I think I think that this is um, for several reasons we don't really want to be doing this, um, even though we're doing this. Oh, that actually got a little better. Wait, oh my God! So Mathematica had to think about it before it came up with this hideous expression for x. Th these are three variables, but x, y, and z, and they certainly we did not get the simplifications we were hoping for. Um, Okay. All right, so let's go ahead and do it another way, which is actually more instructive. Um, we will still use these, um, let's see, we'll still use these uh, azimuth and altitude to check our results, because obviously uh, the results that I've gotten there are tested. Uh, I mean, you just have to sort of take my word for it, but, uh, but I, tr I trust these results. I trust the RA deck. Uh, whatever, 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 to um, azimuth altitude functions. And I think maybe, however, we should get rid of this. I'm going to do a restart session, although I'm pretty sure it doesn't do anything. Session be restarted. Oh, well, that's... Okay. Oh, this is maybe something I meant didn't mean to type in a, in a different cell. Okay. So we do have the function ra dec deck. Ooh. Do we? Um. I might not have put these functions in BC lib staging. Let's find out. Open. Open. Sesame. Um. No, I didn't. I don't think because these. This is actually is a staging library. So I need to create or see that it already exists a file called BC um, something else. Astrolib is probably the one I'm going to want to use. Um, let's see if we actually have BC uh, Astrolib. We probably Astro formulas. And again, the the goal here, by the way, is always to um, is to rename your uh, files differently enough that you can never ever find the one you want. The only formula we really need from here is going to be this one when we test our work. So let's go ahead and no, 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 not a do notebook. Me want new file, cloud files. Okay. Create a new text file. Yay. Okay, so right up until yesterday you were fine with this, but now you won't let me do it. Um, it's kind of uh, the kind of insanity you get from. Uh, a so-called artificial intelligence algorithm. I don't even know if it is an artificial intelligence alg algorithm. Okay, so this is going to be... Oh, I need to save it as something. Um, okay. Pomodoro, back in two and two.
And we are back. And I guess just for consistency, we'll call this BC Lit Astro Formulas. Don't need this, don't need this. Now, if I'm doing this correctly, and I reload this... Well, isn't that special? Alright, let's figure out what I did wrong. I probably just renamed it wrong. Oh, it's BC Astro Formulas. What did I name it here? Oh, I did name it BC Astro Formulas. Yep, always, always good to screw things up as much as possible. Okay. Alright. By the way, the time zone is just me setting the time zone to my own time. I think I actually set it to the Greenwich Mean Time because uh, all of our calculations are like that. Let me quickly get rid of Emacs for some reason. Oh, fuck! It died! It's not cool! I just control Z'd it. All right, let's see if it remembers where it was. It does not remember where it was. Ah, uh, let's see. There is a way to make Emacs remember its session. But, ooh, let me see if I can do... I don't think this is going to work, actually. Because session's not... wasn't... session... Yeah, no. Anyway, um... Yeah, I'm pretty sure, uh, oh wow, time zone equals metric, uh, unit system equals metric. It does let me change that for some reason. Um, I just want to make sure the system time zone is Greenwich Mean Time, not my personal time, because that's easier. But now, let's see if we can say, all right, there we go. Now we have our beautiful function that we can use for testing purposes. Okay, so the next question is, how do we actually convert, uh, you know, using linear coordinates, how do we convert right ascension and declination uh, to azimuth and altitude. Um, and also, let's, this is, this is going like into deep bad ideas, but uh, I'm hoping that GeoGebra will I let me sort of display what I want to display, uh, even though it's not necessarily, um, we're not going to solve the problem from GeoGebra, probably. Okay, nope, 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 I want a new thingy. I want a new figure. Sphere, th yeah, I do want a sphere. Here's my center. Here is my handle. Here is my... Uh, I think that's fine. Okay. Now I want a plane through... Well, technically I do want a plane through three points, but it's going to be like right on the, um, the... I want the XY plane, technically. Okay, fine. There's one point, there's another point, there's a third point. There we go. That's the XY plane. At least I think it's the XY plane. Let's find out. Okay. A is a point, B is a point. Uh, doesn't really matter. Plane C, D, E. <laughs> I, I love the, the plane is Z, 6.44 Z equals zero, which of course is exactly the same as uh, z equals zero. Okay, and then we can get rid of these three things. Be gone from this place. 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 Okay, so there we are. There is a sphere and a plane. The um, we cannot view it from the center, which is what we would really like to do. Um, but okay. Okay, so the, the, uh, the declination of 90 degrees is going to be right up the z-axis. That is the, the sort of default condition. Um, I mean, that's, that's just sort of very basic. Now, the question is where the x and y axes, and I'm almost sure if we do a conversion, if we do, and this is just very trivial, actually. So if we say, um, and I actually mean x, y, z to spherical. So where does the x-axis go in terms of uh, in terms of 
spherical coordinates, and where does the y-axis go? And you would think I would know this, but I don't. Well, I mean, I do. I'm just getting lazy here. Okay, so the x-axis is going to be the zero hour. Uh, that would be, so let's go ahead and write some of this stuff down. Um, I'll go ahead and write it down here for x-axis is zero hour. Um, Z direction, Z axis is increasing declination. Okay. Um, now I think the Y axis, this is, this is where I always forget the direction of right ascension is not necessarily uh, increasing counterclockwise like it is with an angle. It might be decreasing counterclockwise. And the reason we have to care about this is because Azimuth and altitude, it's very well defined that if you go, you know, the, if you start at east and go counterclockwise, you get north, not south. So we can't really reverse our directions for north, south, east, west, but for right ascension and declination, we can. Um, the easiest way to check this would be using Stellarium, but I think I'm not quite up to that right now. So right ascension on Celeste, there we go, on Celestial Sphere, and... Everyone's trying to convince me I'm old. An old term, right ascension. Nowadays we say gibbly goobly blah. Okay. Um, right, vernal equinox, right ascension, declination. So it does appear. Ooh. Okay. It, we will keep this in mind. It does appear that the uh, right ascension increases as you go counterclockwise. Um, and it does. This is probably the best example of this. So for us, we're not making this would be, to me this would be the y-axis. We're making this zero, so I think in, in this case, um, we do actually have the, um, we do have the, uh, the y-axis. So the y-axis is pi over two, which is six hours of, of, of declination, of right ascension. Okay, so we're good. The counterclockwise thing, I get the thing that's gonna blow up on us, but for right now, yeah, it's, it's fine. So now that we have this lovely celestial sphere, why is this page still loading? Uh, the question is, what can we do to it um, to make it look like it looks in, you know, a given location? The first thing we have to do, ooh, shiny spinny, um, is we have to, uh, if you're in, the, we're going to use the northern hemisphere um, because we are. Um, and in the northern hemisphere, the, uh, the local site, okay, the local sidereal time is always uh, culminating at direction south. Um, I wish I knew which one of these was the y-axis, but anyway, it doesn't, probably doesn't matter. Um, so, so what we need, and that's called the local sidereal time. So the first thing we need to do is we need to rotate this so that the local sidereal time uh, is, you know, the, the hour angle at the local sidereal time, whatever that right ascension is, is dead south. So we do that by doing a rotation around the z-axis. Um, and this, by the way, is how I did it originally, way back in the day. Rotate z-axis by, well, how much do we rotate it by? Well, we know that right now, um, this is where it gets kind of ugly, and maybe I should have been more careful with this. Uh, right now, we know that the x-axis has the zero hour. We don't want the x-axis to have the local sidereal time because we're not defining that as our south. We want this axis, the negative y-axis, that's south in our, in our scheme, uh, in, the n in the northern hemisphere at least. Um, actually, I think that's true in the southern hemisphere too. Uh, we'll just get different results. We'll, we'll, we'll test our results. So, so how do we do that? So this is actually currently at negative six hours, which is a really bizarre thing, to, or negative pi over two if you want to use radians. So we have to basically shift it negative pi over two uh, minus the local sidereal time. And in I got that down to one direction or the other. But let's just see, uh, let's just uh, go ahead and say that. Um, pi over two minus um, local sidereal time. And I'm pretty sure I mean local sidereal time minus pi over two. And by the way, when we say rotate x-axis, you can of course do it in two different directions. Uh, we're gonna do it counterclockwise which is known as following the right-hand rule. Uh, if we wanted to do it the other direction, we would be calling it the negative z-axis. 
but by the right hand rule, uh, this is we always think of our rotations as going uh, counterclockwise when looking down on the z axis. Uh, so there we are. Okay. All right. So we have minus six hours here. We want LST, wherever the hell it is. So if we let's say LST was eleven hours, and this is effectively eighteen hours. Um, Yeah, I'm the only thing I'm confused about is what the sign is going to be here. Uh, sign, sign everywhere. Uh, S I G N. Also, S I N E, sign, different kind of sign. All right, so let's say we had, let's just use a real simple value. Let's say we wanted the zero hour was the correct, let's say it was the, you know, this is the, this is the zero hour uh, sidereal time, so we would go. Um, so we basically have to rotate by minus six, which would do the trick. Um, uh, that was probably too easy of a case. Um, let's say it's at the one. Let's say at the one hour here we want to rotate. So we have to rotate. I said we have to rotate counterclockwise. So how much do we have to rotate counterclockwise? Well, um, this is minus six hours. So we have to rotate counterclockwise. At Jesus Christ, maybe I won't even, maybe I'll just do a spinny thing. I'll just pretend that we're rotating. Okay, so we have to go minus six hours. Uh, one hour has to basically go d all the way to um, south. So it has to travel basically um, 270 degrees uh, minus, um, 270 degrees minus one hour. So that does look like it's going to be uh, 3 pi over 2, so negative pi over 2 plus the right ascension. I'm not 100%. Um, oh, yeah, plus, plus, the, plus the local. Okay, so let's just test out some cases. If the local side real time is 0, we would be rotating by minus pi over 2, which means we would be rotating clockwise pi over 2. Nope, don't want to change the size of that. Oh, do I not? Can I not? <coughs> Which is correct. That makes zero hours uh, come to the southern hemisphere. If it is six hours, it's this sucker here, um, we want to get it to L six minus pi over two is. Hmm. Six is pi over two, so pi over two minus pi over two is zero, which says this is already in the correct position, which it is not. This is clearly not in the right position. Uh, we're going the wrong way. So I might have meant pi over two minus local sidereal time. Let's see if this works. If this doesn't work, we're in trouble. And then I've then I've screwed up the formula in a much more serious way. Okay, so when the local sidereal time is zero, this says rotate by pi over 2. Um, no. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, which does not work, actually. Um, because when the local side real time is uh, 0, we definitely want to rotate by negative pi over 2. So let's work this out. Um, 0 hour si SID time is a um, I want to be kind of consistent here, so we have to rotate this zero hour 270 degrees. And I'm just going to look at the degrees for now, or 90 degrees, minus 90 degrees. Six hour sidereal time, um, this is me failing miserably. Okay, so this is, it's six hour sidereal time, we basically have to do 180 degree rotation. It doesn't really matter which direction, but it's 180. And that can be plus or minus, doesn't really matter. 12 hour sidereal time. What happens then? Okay. We need to rotate this to this. That's a plus 90 degree transformation. And what about 18 hour side? We're, we're going like unnecessarily deep now. Um, for 18 hour side real time, we're fine. This is exactly where it is right now. Okay. So using all that information, can I figure out what the hell I'm doing? Uh, probably not. Let's find out. 
So basically, if we consider the oh, minus 90, uh, something is quite wrong. Um, okay. This is a very easy problem. I'm just bl blanking on it, as they say. Um, so this could be... So this is actually weird. So this is like a minus 90... Ooh! Or a plus 270. Ah, uh, here we go. There we go. Okay. So it's basically a plus 270 each time. So here we have... Um, Negative 90 plus 270 is positive 180. 180 plus 270, which is the same as minus 180 plus 270, is plus 90, and plus 90 plus 270 is, zero, is 360, which is zero. Okay, so this is what we, we're doing, basically. Um, it is each time we are, we are adding the local sidereal time, uh, it gets bigger and bigger. Um, But there's a problem with that, actually, because we're only going up by pi over 4, and yet our angle is increasing 3 pi over 4. So that is a minus. I will get this. R oh! I think this is what I meant. I knew, I knew I'm just off by a sign. Let's make sure these work for the four cases, and I'm pretty sure they do. All right, when there's a uh, zero-hour sidereal time, this just says rotate negative pi over 2, which is this. When it's six hours sidereal time, it says rotate negative pi, which is this. When it is um, 12 hours sidereal time, which is the same as pi, pi over 2 plus pi is 3 pi over 2. Uh oh, hang on. Negative 3 pi over 2 plus 2 pi is pi over 2, is this. And um, if it's 18 hours sidereal time, this is minus 3 pi over 2. Uh, no, sorry, minus pi over 2 or plus 3 pi over 2. Minus pi over 2, this is minus, minus, wait. If it's 18 hours sidereal time, we don't need any adjustment whatsoever. So pi over 2, come on, baby, plus 3 pi over 2 is 2 pi, negative 2 pi is 0. Yes, I kind of cheated a little bit there, but I'm pretty sure this is the right rotation. Okay, so the big question isn't, you know, is A, I'm an idiot, but aside from that, um, how do we do this rotation in linear algebra? We don't want to do it using, um, you know, we don't want to use do it by just adding to the, uh, to the uh, azimuth, basically, the right ascension or whatever. We want to do this using linear algebra. And fortunately, if I've done it right, um, I have a rotation function that basically defines the matrix of rotation by any number except I don't apparently have it. I, I do actually. Let's see. Rotation matrix. See? And this and I think actually Mathematica has one built in, so let me actually try to use that one. Um because they're they're actually uh, there's usually um usually their built in functions are, are you're better off using them. Okay, let's see what they have. Rotate left. I'm pretty sure that's not rotation transform. Okay. Um, not quite what I want. I want a matrix. All right. Rotate. I don't know if that's generic enough. Let's find out, though. Yeah, unfortunately, this is for graphics. Um, almost sure rotate left and rotate right are going to be for graphics. Oh, no, that, those are for lists. Rotation matrix. Yeah, I probably should have gone with that one first, huh? God damn it. Okay. Gives the 3D rotation matrix for counterclockwise, which is what we said is going to be positive, around the vector W. Um, okay, that's awesome. Um, rotates the vector V. Okay, that's nice. Okay, so I think this is the version we want. Rotation matrix. Uh, 
Um, so we want the rotation matrix. that takes, uh, that rotates, that's our rotation, and the thing we're rotating is, um, we're rotating on the z-axis, that's the zero, zero, 001 axis. Okay, so what does that give us? Probably garbage. Oh, that's nice actually. So that's our rotation matrix. Uh, we will call this our z-rot our z-rotation matrix. It will be important to us. So now that after we've done that, do we have we solved the problem? Well, no, because the um, the North Pole is still like way the heck up, is, is facing north. So how do we fix it to the North Pole? It has to be basically in the northern direction, and it's going to be as high as the latitude, which means we have to rotate it by 90 minus the latitude. Uh, and this time we're going to be rotating around the y-axis, because this is the y-axis, we're going to rotate like this. So the north star is, is where it needs to be. The nor north celestial pole is where it needs to be. So there we go. There we go. Un Unrotate. Okay. So now I've got to be really careful here. The direction, the y, the positive direction of rotation for the y-axis is, oh man. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and just wing this, but we might need to fix it. I, I, I might be rotating the wrong direction. That's the problem. I'm pretty sure this is considered a rotation around the... Uh, well, let's see. If you're over here from the y-axis... No, this looks like it's a clockwise rotation. It's a negative of the angle that we want. Um, yeah, because from, from the positive y-axis... Th th so the rotation we want to do is basically rotate this to this uh, around this th th we're say the red is the y-axis right now but if you look at it from here we're rotating oh wait 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 yeah it is a clockwise rotation um, it from as viewed from the y-axis so we do need to actually clockwise rotation of a given number of degrees is the um, negative of the clock counterclockwise rotation by the same number of degrees. So here, our rotation matrix, and I think I'm about to run into some problems. So the rotation matrix is just gonna be uh, negative pi over two minus lat. So basically lat minus pi over two. But there's a problem. Because we're not gonna give the lat as a spherical coordinate, we're giving it as a um, as a rectangular coordinate. So, kind of a bummer. I thought I had that one nailed. Um, okay. So, we can, f I think we can get rid of these now. Okay. Let's see what we're doing here. Okay. Um, by the way, I should be have been typing pi. Because we get Oh, we get even more simplification because that really is pi. Yeah, very nice, simp very nice matrices here. Except this one, of course, we need to say we're rotating around. It's the positive y. Well, I guess we could have done this as the negative y-axis and changed our angle, but let's go and do this. Yeah, and a very nice looking, um, very nice looking uh, matrix there. And we will call this our Y-Rot matrix. But now, well, we can't yet, because now we've run into smack dab into a problem. Um, and in fact, the there's another problem here. Um, all right, so this is uh, these are unexpected problems. These were not brought these were not brought to you for in my my. I was not trying to do this intentionally. Uh, because the local sidereal time actually depends on the Greenwich mean sidereal time, which is just a, something we can get minus the longitude, or plus the longitude, actually. Um, but the longitude we're giving also as a, uh, as a, uh, a vector, not as, a, uh, not as an angle. So, so this is not good. Okay. X, Y, Z. So this is maybe where we need to do some of this crap here. 
L uh, X L L Y L L Z. I'm going to be unhappy with something though. So there's this. This is not. This is not difficult. Um. Um. My temptation now is to replace L L Z with square root of one minus L L X squared minus L L Y squared. Um. Because by the way, Mathematica does have a built-in function for this. I don't think it did at the time I wrote this, so I'm gonna leave it like this. Um, so actually, I think I'm gonna have some 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 real issues with this. Yes, I will, because if I want to extract the uh, right ascension, the uh, longitude from this, that's not hard. That's just this. Um, so that part we can actually do. RA goes to, um, you know what, I'll call this temp 1247. Um, did I skip a Pomodoro? Oops, I did. Uh, I will go on the next Pomodoro. I, I should go on the next Pomodoro. Uh, but I did skip one by mistake. We'll just continue. Um, so we want to say the RA goes to this. Um, yeah. And I'm sorry, no, the longitude goes to this. The latitude, let me take a quick look at what, what ha this is just temporary so I can, let me, let me see what this, this gives me again. So the latitude is giving me things that depend on x, y, and z, and I don't want that. I want it only to depend on, on z. So, let's see. I'm sorry. This is this is my my bad. Uh, this is the uh, this is the the uh, this is the latitude. This is the radius, which is one. Um, so I only want it in terms of z, and I happen to know this is one minus l l z squared. The question is, if, if I replace this with one minus l l x, then I'll get it only in terms of of x and y, which I don't want. So this is where we're getting a little bit clever, and we're saying we want to keep our vectors straight. So we want to keep this to be. Um, and I'm also going to be probably really a bad idea here to use the two argument form of um, t arctangent. And okay, and I think uh, yeah, I think we're balanced here. Okay. So this these are the transformations we're going to be making. Uh, the first one comes directly out of the spherical coordinates. The second one, <laughs> we have to we have to do a little bit of a uh, little bit of tweaking there, because we want we want to show that the latitude and the z vector are in inherently tied uh, inherently tied together. Okay, looking good. So now, these are both beautiful matrices. We're going to replace the local sidereal time with GMST plus lon. And we probably need a name for this. Um, given temp, actually, it's only going to use one of them, but you know, whatever. So let's see what our z rotation matrix looks like once we've made this correction, once we've made this change. And God, I think it's going to be really ugly. Um, I guess we can get rid of this. I don't want this to print. Now here's where, okay. Uh, I do not like this matrix. Um, and I believe it can be simplified. I say that, um, let me make sure zrot, the forward slash dot actually got merged into zrot, which I'm sure it did. Okay. All right, there we go. So now, oh, this is getting ugly. I even lost my condition. Let's just see if we can simplify. Let's just see if we can full simplify Z rot under no extra conditions. Probably can't. Um, yeah. And because we have, the nice thing is we don't have an LLZ in here. Uh, the transformation um, to longitude, sorry, to the, um, the z rotation depends only on 
the longitude, not on the latitude, which is not surprising, but, but you know. Um, okay, so this is our Z rotation matrix. It's going to get worse. Start assigning these some names. Okay, so this is going to be our Y rotation matrix. I'm almost sure this is correct. Um, but of course, we need to apply our transformation because latitude is not allowed in here. We only are allowed to say, um, that's a beautiful looking matrix. How come I couldn't get one like that for the longitude tr translation? Okay. That is effing gorgeous. Oh man. That is a matrix to show people. Um, assuming they want to see your matrix. Again, I, I do have to remind people that don't show your matrix to people who don't want to see your matrix. Okay, so this is going to be, I'm going to, this is the kind of thing that really uh, annoys me about myself. This is a beautiful matrix. I'm going to see if we can make it even more beautiful. So this is going to be temp 1252. This is going to be the, um, uh, the Y rotation matrix, which we probably should have called it that, huh? Nah, we're fine. And I don't think it'll simplify. Obviously, it's a very simple thing to begin with. So now, how do we get the matrix that does both of these at the same time? Well, we multiply in this order. We first take temp 1251, we do the, the spinny, around the z-axis, which gives us the longitude correction. And then we do the spinny around the y-axis, which gives us the latitude correction. God willing, this will be our final answer. No, well, not our final answer. It'll be, it'll be this. Um, <coughs> so this is our uh, matrix that presumably transforms, uh, if everything's in rectangular coordinates, right ascension and declination to azimuth and altitude. Now in both cases uh, we are talking about rectangular coordinates so we have to convert right ascension and declination to rectangular and once we get this result we have to convert this back to spherical to get the actual azimuth and altitude. Presumably this was all worth it but um, really I'm beginning to wonder. Okay so this is a matrix yeah. Um, so now I'm going to copy all of this into um, BC Astro formulas, I think. Um, but the thing we really care about is MAT. We care about Matt, man. Matt is cool. Okay. So here's the money shot, as we don't say. And this one I do want in input form, because this is the thing we're going to really use. Okay. Alrighty, so we have, hopefully doing an, a text fill won't hurt it, and putting this into text mode. Yeah, that does not look as beautiful as I thought it would. But hey, that should be the matrix of transformation. So how do we test this now? Remember we said we were going to use our RA deck to lat lawn blah 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 function to test? Well, the first thing we do is we get rid of all this crap because I've copied and pasted. Oh, no, I haven't. Hang on. Let me copy and paste that real quick. Copy, pasta, delete. Okay. Okay, so now we have this beautiful matrix. We can get rid of all of our output. Um, so how do we test it? Well, the test will be we take, um, we take spherical to XYZ of right ascension and declination, with 1 as the radius. Um, multiply it by matrix. Uh, RA deck to, and this would convert it to latitude and longitude. Is it really this simple? And then we want it back into, uh, we need to convert it back into uh, spherical coordinates. Uh, because we want the azimuth and altitude, which are, of course, spherical in nature. Um, clearly, this is not a good thing. Um, mm, 
No, we don't really need... We need to uh, define this. We don't need to see it anymore, though. See what happens. I think something went wrong. Oh, maybe it did. So... Oh, wait a minute. Mm. We are from France. I am not happy with this answer. Maybe I am. Okay. And the, the, the reason this isn't matching our right ascension function is because the latitude is also in uh, spherical coordinates. So we kind of need to change that back. Um, alrighty, so LLX is going to be what? Um, uh, Alright, just I'll just convert, I'll just do the thing that I need to do. XYZ to spherical coordinates of LLY, LLX, LLY, and did I call it LL, I did call it LLZ. Why? Why did I call it that? Um... Actually, why did I call it that? That could have been a... That? Oh, no, no, right, because we wanted to separate out the Z and the XY components. So we really did need that. Okay, so now... We need to send... Um, Mm-hmm. Um, no, the other way around. I have the brains of a freaking... No, no, wait, 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 wait. I have no idea what I'm doing. Okay. So now LLX... Octane, this becomes uh, just the latitude, so... Um... um so what we want to say here is LLX. No, I had it. It was the other way. Sorry. Spherical to XYZ of longitude and latitude and 1 for the radius. Okay. Right. So now we need to basically say X is this, Y is this, Z is this for latitude. And if this all works, we're going to get the same formula. I mean, not super exciting, but 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 it is sort of exciting. And I think there is an issue here. Is there a matrix spherical? No, it, there isn't. We're good. Okay. So now we'll call this temp 1259, which means it's almost Pomodoro time, in case anyone's interested. And then we'll call this... Um, okay. So... Uh, LLX goes to temp 1251 1 LLY goes to temp 1259 2 and LLZ I mean yeah we'll go ahead and call it this it could be we could do it with a the subtraction because we know the uh, radius of this vector is is 1 and we'll call this transformation temp 1300 which means it's Pomodoro time back in 2 and 2 And we are back.
no one in chat, which is cool. Okay, so now we need to move this, of course. So now, um, if we convert LLX, which are you know LLY, all of which are uh, spherical coordinate, uh, Cartesian coordinates, back into their spherical form, what do we get? It's probably not going to look very nice. And yeah, we can probably something call this. Yeah, that does not look very nice. Um, now, I th I mean, in theory, it'll simplify to whatever RA deck blah, blah, blah is. Um, but realistically, I'm not sure that it will. Well, that's actually not too bad. Um, Uh, what's interesting, by the way, is the third parameter here is 1, even though th it's very, very difficult to, to, to see that it is equal to 1. Um, okay. So now, let's just look at the azimuth, uh, which is this. And this is the azimuth in, in spherical terms. Yeah, that's not looking too good. Um, oh, hang on. Actually, that doesn't look too bad. That... It's a little bit weird, because cosine lat squared should be cosine lat, because we know everything here is... Um, yeah, we probably need to add some conditions. So now, we want to compare this to ra deck da da da, -da given ra deck, lat, lon, gmst, what is the azimuth there? And are they similar to each other? Theoretically identical. Wow. That is... Yeah, I'm not going to quite say they're identical, but they're, they look pretty close to each other. Um, sign, I mean, there's some, you know, obviously there's some... Uh, Clipping of variables. Um, what the, is this really the cosine of a cosine of a? Uh, this does not seem. That just seems weird. Okay, so now the moment of truth. What's the difference between them? probably not going to simplify to zero. Uh, but let's go ahead and simplify it anyway. Let's see what it does simplify to. It is zero. I mean, I, it better be zero. Um, that's not zero. Okay, now we can add some conditions that we can simplify with. Um, Let's go ahead and get our conditions out of, I think we actually have conditions from BC lib, uh, BC astral formula, so let's make sure we do actually have some conditions. We'll need more, but actually we might not need more. And it's possible that I decided the conditions were not important enough to be part of the formula. Um, I mean, that was inside of the, f oh, wait. I just included, no, right, 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 because I only picked out one formula from uh, the real BC Astro formulas to copy into, into Wolfram. Let's go ahead and um, get one more thing in there. Our lovely conditions, um, which have now vanished. No. Okay, so the, these are the... Okay, uh, and you don't need to save, which just bugs me, but apparently it's all, all magic. Okay, and then we will say, well, let's just see if conditions now exist. They do. So we can now say simplify this given conditions. Ladies and gentlemen, we have... 
not the number zero. Actually, it might be the number zero. We just don't recognize it as such. Because this arc tan is y over, if this, okay. If this, whatever the hell this is, where, where are we, are we getting multiple arc tans? Um, if we can show the denominator of this is, is actually, um, is zero, that, that is, well, I mean, there's no, you know, the zero over something then we, we were actually pretty good. Let's go ahead and do the tangent of this. I realize we could also be testing with examples and probably should be, but... Okay... Oh, I see. We're, um... We actually do have two separate arctans here. So let's go ahead and uh, actually simplify these separately. So we have this simplify going on. Um, so we'll say temp 1303 equals simplify temp 1302 given conditions. And then we will just look at that briefly. So temp 1303 is, um, is our, yeah, is our, the new answer, the one we're hoping to test, uh, and uh, yeah, that's the one we got from the matrix. Let's make times this. Okay, so that's the one we're hoping to test. Wow, it figured out the last variable was one. Nice. Okay, and then the first element of this should be the azimuth. I don't think it'll simplify any further than this. Um, that's a good looking azimuth there. And so what we're comparing it to is, of course, the thing I shouldn't have erased because it's kind of hard to type back in. But we're still saying LON. I really should be using LNG for longitude. But to be consistent. So let's look at the azimuths they give us. Dun dun dun. That is actually not the same thing. Actually, it might be. It's really hard to tell right now. Um, so, so I guess what I want to do here is I want to assign a, um, a temp variable for the the whole RA deck uh, lat this this output without having it uh, truncated without just using one of the parameters. Because um, then I can just say temp 13091, which is a lot easier to type. And it also sort of gives us this uh, this symmetry between the I answers we've computed and the answer we want. So let's take a look here. See, these two things are different, but I don't know if they kind of cancel out or something. All right, what's the difference between them? Probably not what we want. Yeah, it's this. Can you simplify that given our conditions? Dun, 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 dun. Dun -dun. The answer is no, I can't. Yeah, so it's not quite doing what we want. Um, now, of course, one thing we could do in here, and we probably should be doing, um, is maybe these aren't really the same. Maybe I really have screwed this up, and we're getting different azimuths d based on the method we use to, uh, to compute them. And it's not out of the question that I could have biffed this. So one way to test that is to assign some values um, to the various variables and see what happens. Um, okay, undo. I don't want that. I want this, but I don't need... Well, 
Actually, why not? Alright, so we're going to do this given... This is a very special case, latitude equals zero, so this... this if this gives us zero, that's great, but... Um, not a proof, obviously. Um, yeah, this is beginning to look like I could be wrong here. Now, what if we set longitude equal to zero as well? In this case, we might get an equality just by random chance. Because we're choosing... Oh! Now, these are being look different to me. There, there's definitely an element here that is not matching up. So... This is going to force inequality, I think, but... But there's a method to my madness. Uh, those, that is not zero. That is not zero, even if declination is zero, I don't think. Indeterminate. Okay. Um, so now I'm just going to set declination to one radian. And, and the, the point is this is not going to be zero. Yeah. Minus one minus pi over two is not zero. So I have clearly screwed something up. Um, I'm 99% sure that it is this... Um, oh good, I got rid of those matrices that I used to create these. That was a brilliant... Um, I think I do have them over here though. Um, okay, let's go ahead and put these back in here. After this kind of brings up the question, how the hell is this matrix being calculated? Oh, wait a minute, maybe it's not being calculated. That could be the problem. Um, let's say identity matrix. Um, so Z rot equals full simplify. Yeah, this is, this is probably Yeah, this is probably like critical to actually have, having computed all this stuff. I am a frickin' moron. Okay, so now, <laughs> okay, this depends on temp twelve forty seven. Um, you know, it might be easier actually to just just copy the matrix uh, from its hard coded form. To be honest, I don't think, I think that was not the problem. I get the feeling that uh, somehow Mathematica knew what the, these values were. Okay, so let's try this, um, but with the expectation we will fail again. And we did. Okay, so the matrix was not the problem. Um, I'm pretty sure I rotated the right direction around the z-axis. I'm less sure that I rotated the right direction around the y-axis. So let's carefully... Um, bring these suckers back in. And I'm going to try to combine them into fewer statements. Um, Or maybe I won't. I will, however, print out Z rot to make sure that it's actually doing what we want. That it's actually not just dying. Yeah, that looks ugly, but I think it's correct. Okay. And then our X rot. Um, yeah, this is probably the reason not to use temporary variables too much. I think we should call this our x-rot matrix. 
and we will go ahead and print it to make sure it's not stupid. Yes, yeah, so I remember saying that one looked really beautiful. It's our X rotation matrix. So now we will allow we will leave this the way this is for right now, but what we really want is our matrix should be the uh, x rot dot z rot. And we do want to see that and then then we'll see if this is giving us the right the right answer. And I just realized something that we'll we'll deal with in a minute. <coughs> First of all, this is a rotation around the y axis. It's not a z rot. Okay. And that was it, first of all. Um, yeah, and I get the feeling that I need—I should have negated this or put a negative one here. <coughs> Excuse me. Now, just to, um, just to show how powerful Mathematica is, we'll flip this to a rotation around the negative y-axis, uh, which I think is going to do the right thing. Well, that kind of did something. Um, 1 minus pi over 2. So it's still way... I mean, it's wrong, but it's interesting. Um, okay. So... In the Y rotation, we're rotating... Okay, I thought we were rotating pi over 2 minus the lat in, in the correct, but I think this is actually just going to bring us back to what we had before. Yeah. So something here is not quite... I'm pretty confident this is the right Z rotation. Um, although it is the Z rotation that would affect... Um, It is the Z rotation that would affect azimuth. Um, so let's let's do this. Um, let's look at the um, let's look at the azimuth. Whoa, your mama. Let's look at the azimuth when the latitude is pi over two, and therefore there is no. Uh, this might just give us indeterminate, though. And I, we need to stop printing out whatever the hell that is. Aha! It's hard to kind of beat this. This basically says we're doing the wrong r rotation um, at the z-axis, because we're clearly getting the wrong answer by a very good amount of n plus 90 degrees. Okay, Pomodoro, back in two and two.
And we are back. Okay. So that was a pretty embarrassing mistake right at the top here. Uh, when I did my Z rotation. Um, GMST plus longitude is local sidereal time. And I guess I somehow biffed the minus sign. Um, well, now I'm, I'm clutching at straws here, which is not good, but... Uh, it might be that this is a minus and this is a minus. Um, doesn't really change what 5 over 2 is, though. Okay, so I'm basically going to tweak this until we get the right answer for this one special case, and then work our way up, or down as it may be. Not even close. Worse answer. So let's go ahead and change our Z rotation matrix back to be the plus of this. And maybe we don't need a negative sign out here after all. I think I might have the flip the wrong direction. Taking a while. Thinking. Thinking too much. Alright, we're rerunning, I guess. Is it still thinking? It can't be the case. No, I think I just forgot to hit shift enter. So Yeah, and we're getting a little bit too much crap in here now, so we might have to shift enter. And the answer is dun 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 dun. Did I? Yep, I... No, this is all one cell. I'm going to go ahead and delete all output. Since we know this is the wrong matrix, I think we're going to delete it from the comments. Um, but this is being printed, right? Yeah, this is being printed. Has something terrible happened? I mean, I thought I did delete all. Oh, let's go ahead and delete this, this, and this. Th these are outputs. This is a freaking number, dude. Unless there's something wrong with the mathematical input. <coughs> um. There was a temporary problem communicating with the server. Well, that's not good at all. But at least now we know what's wrong. Shift enter. If problems persist, try logging out and back logging back in. <coughs> Excuse me. I should probably mute when I do that. Um And though I should also figure out why the hell I have so much phlegm. Alright, I'm just going to play it safe here and paste this into um, BC Astro formulas. I will... Oh, it's still working. And... I could just create a new notebook. Oh, well, excuse me, you fucking morons. Why didn't you tell me this? Um, scheduled? You never gave me... Eh, they might have sent me an email about it. I never remember. Um, okay, so they have a scheduled upgrade going on. Um, okay, so the goal here is we're going to try to find the matrix that is equivalent to changing the right ascension and declination to azimuth 
and altitude in um, rectangular coordinates. Um, and then we're going to see from there if we can get better formulas uh, for latitude, you know, for solving for other things. We'll, we'll use that relation to see if we can do better for solving for other things. Uh, let's see how long I've been going here. I've been moving for about one and a half hours, and it looks like... Um, I'm going to check something. They probably did tell me, and it kind of is bugging me that I... I probably ignored it, which is not... Um, no, they did not tell me, at least as nearly as I can tell. Alrighty, let's see where the hell we are here. Let's see if we can do a, you know, we've waited a while. We've waited long enough. Um, new notebook. No, you sons of whores. Okay. All right, well, it's been an hour and a half. I probably should go ahead and get off for a while. Um, I'm going to try to be back on later this afternoon. We will continue this once these monkeys have finished monkeying with the Wolfram Cloud. All right, thank you for watching, and talk to you later.